Oceania at the International Championships. We got to do some interviews, but we do have a little bit more time to kill. So bring Daz and Joe over to the couch and we're going to have a little of a bit of a special segment coming up. Um, you guys remember caster battles? We used to do that. I've heard rumors of them. They've been away for a little while now. Yeah, they have been, but we're going to be able to get one on a stage with Lou and Rose battling it out series two. I am excited for this. A good chance to show off your skills too. I mean, we don't always get to play at events because you know, we're over here, but nice chance to like show everyone what you got. Yeah, no, I, I love caster battles. I think there are players on stage. There oh, they look are. At the go. I'm like, I'm looking at Rose and I'm imagining the Sylveon on her team and Lou with the incorrect gastrodon plushie at the front of the desk you have to imagine she bring that right i like rose is like kind of camouflage too she's kind of just like fitting into the scene that's pretty cool letting scene. her battling do the talking exactly. right like you're you're making sure that you're the little amoongus plushie it is so ugly that it is actually cute can be standing out with the rest of the team so i am excited for this one and i mean talking about their accomplishments um amazing casters <laughs> I mean, that's where I'm at. I don't have any, I don't have any player <laughs> accomplishments as well because we've dedicated so much of our time in this scene to growing the community and growing the broadcast. So we spent all these regionals we go around, even our grassroots days, Adam. Yeah. Those were days that we weren't competing to get those accomplishments, right? I mean, if it's, you know, you have to give an advantage on, on accomplishments alone. Let's throw it back to like 2017, right? Where Lou was playing here in Oceania. I believe it was actually in Sydney. I could be wrong on that one though, but it definitely uh, was a while ago before even I started coming out to these events. So. Uh, was it is a that really a interesting I know, that's position? What I'm, I'm like, I need to get my eyes checked. I'm leaning forward. That is, in fact, a Lycan rock. No Sylveon in sight. I'm only a little bit disappointed in you, Rose. But Lou is going to be rocking with the Gastron. And a, a Corviknight as well. What is Lou's team? This that is, is, a, this that's, is awesome. That's, okay, it's Grimmsnarl, Arcanine, Iron Hands, Gastrodon, Sylveon on Lou's side. That's the wrong way. And yes, I believe that was the Corviknight. I'm excited I, for Corviknight. I saw the Great Tusk over on the side of uh, Rose, so kind of something we've been seeing a little bit more of. I, I think Lou's uh, showing just a lot more creativity in her team selection. Corviknight kind of walls Great Tusk, too, if you think about it. All you have is fighting and ground attacks. Like, it's not that great into Corviknight. Hey, we got a little bit bigger for our, our viewing <laughs> Let's go benefit. production. Thank you. You guys are the best. No, I I love the creativity and even just the Lycanroc. I mean, Lycanroc can be such a strong Pokemon. It just doesn't necessarily have the longevity sometimes. But, I mean, you got the Lycanroc. You got the Tyranitar. There are some Shan... Shan shenanigans, San shenanigans. I don't know how it ever happened over on the. It's kind of, it's kind of a little. Sand different. usage, I think, is a safer term than, yeah. than any of this. It's, it's <laughs> going to be important. Um, the big thing here, looking at Rose's team, and obviously, you know, Gastron's been around a while. We all know what it's weak to. Um, Joe and I get to play our favorite game, which is spot the grass type. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and with these secret terrors, who knows which one it's going to be? Yeah, honestly. Yeah, we the don't, only we thing, don't have any of this information. Oh, sorry about that, Sierra. Uh, just to touch on Gastrodon, uh, obviously it is not as free of a matchup that Gastrodon would like. Like when you're into Dondozo, you know you're free, but because of Iron Bundle's freeze dry, it's actually su it's four times super effective into Gastrodon, which means freeze dry does like 650,000% damage. It's like ridiculous. Joe, Joe, have you heard the annual stats? What? The exaggerations are up 408 million percent this year. I heard so. <laughs> I just, you just gotta like remember the player tendencies in this moment too, and the fact that the Gastrodon is on Lou's side of the field that might get to see it. But look at that, all the creativity you have the meta side and the not so meta side. Yeah, also shout outs to Katie for uh, for being in this battle here. We have a nice, uh, another person backstage helping us out here. Uh, the absolute audacity to lead Sylveon right in front of Rosemary's face. That's what point, that's really standing out that's to personal. me. That's personal. That's honestly though, like Rose has gone with this really meta lead. And I like <laughs> that Lou has just kind of said, you know what, I'm actually going to use your favorite. Let's have fun with this. Um, so I, I think it's very interesting. Uh, you know, maybe maybe Lou's going to be able to show us that there is a way to completely break this meta pairing, uh, or we're going to see why it's so good. I mean, both Iron Bundle and Fluttermane are pretty delicate, so if there's not actually really a way to deal with the Pokemon on the other side, I mean, Corviknight, yeah, maybe we're not really seeing it in Series 1 or 2, but that bird can um, take a hit. Well, Alberto Lara is currently 9-3 and three here in Oceania with a Corviknight on his team, so there is... 
there is some viability to the Corviknight. He also uh, top cut in San Diego with Corviknight in Series 1. It's cr crazy the Corviknight really never got a time to shine in Sword and Shield, the game it was released in. Yeah. And then we move into Scarlet Violet and everyone's like, oh, that Pokemon was good. Yeah. Like, we just all forgot about it for three years. Hydro Pump, I mean, Rose is not liking what you've seen with that Corviknight. The double attack into it, oh. and it's gone! Yeah, not known for its special defense. Uh, the KO! That's uh, that Corviknight, we were just hyping it up, is absolutely gone, but yeah. Uh, Hyper Voice still hurts, the Fluttermane being quite wise there. I love the Terra Steel, actually. Um, you know, it's probably the best defensive one on the Fluttermane, so showing off just how good it is. Um, but, you know, Sylveon's uh, got a little bit of work to do. Hey, at least it could be trying to put in a little bit more work. Throat Spray, I mean, those Hyper Voices can start to hit for a punch. Anything that's not the Fluttermane at this point. Yeah, and I wonder what Lou has in the back. So, obviously, we're going to see here her third Pokemon in Gastrodon. I told you. Okay, so... Yeah, Rosemary kind of nodding her head, understanding, all right, I can't go for Hydro Pump. This is where it comes down to what Terra type Gastrodon is for Lou. Because if it's a Fire Terra, you can obviously take those Icy Winds very well. Uh, but you forcing your Gastrodon be your Terra type uh, in this matchup could be detrimental if that fourth Pokemon early on. Well, it's not going to be the Gastrodon going with the Terra type. It's actually going to be the Sylveon Whoa. taking the, the Fire Terra. I think the way Rose has played this turn out is really wise. Um, the big thing here is making sure that that Fluttermane can keep working. Uh, so buying a little bit of time with the Protect makes a lot of sense, because that's pretty much what Lou's going to have to target down. As, as Iron Bundle can definitely deal with his Gastrodon, so it's like a match Protect here. And yeah, I mean, the Sylveon too, now that Hydro Pump is off the table with the Gastrodon being on the field, I mean, it... Anything will just be the ice attacks hitting into it, but the protect so well done with the Gastrodon, but the Terra Blast not going to be able to do anything in retaliation. Good protects on both ends. Yeah. Oh, but if that was a Hydro, uh, a Hydro, or hyper excuse voice? me, Hydro, hi, Hyper Voice, we that would have been enough to knock out the Iron Bundle. And we actually see the two in the back are Tyranitar and Great Tusk for uh, for Rosemary there. So that could have been a nice knockout. Uh, on Lou's end, but unfortunately he goes into the Protect. Is Joe revealing an unreleased move from the next game, Hydro Voice? Is that what's <laughs> happening here? <laughs> oh, yeah. A big leaks from Joe Brown. Yeah, Gen 10 gimmick. What? But no, I mean, that, that's a smart play. I think matching the, the Protects is really wise. You know, the big focus there is obviously getting rid of this Fluttermane, which is going to be a real nightmare to do just through Hyper Voice. And you have to protect the Gastrodon there, else it's going to get freeze-dried. So uh, certainly a smart play from both. We'll see a little bit of switching going on as well. As Tyranitar comes in, that's going to take the Fire Terror Blast way better. Oh, 100%. But for the Iron Bundle too, this is just like constant pressure and the Gastrodon not really wanting to phase up to it. The swap out as well. Get to see what it is. The Iron Hands, the Pokemon we always debate. What can it do? Is it really that good? At least it's going to be good at taking that hit. Uh, this is a massive Hyper Voice, though. It's going to be super effective on Tyranitar and enough to get the Iron Bundle taken down. So, you know, leveling up the Pokemon count one to one. And honestly, Tyranitar and this Steel uh, Fluttermane uh, looking at a fighting type, not the, the most fun, I would say, overall. Yeah, I guess you have to determine, if, if Fluttermane comes back in here, it is the fastest Pokemon. It uh, it can actually be fake-outed now since it is a Steel type. That's one thing <laughs> that regular Fluttermane benefits as a Ghost type. But now, Iron Hand's just switched in on this turn, so he so Lou has access to fake-out if you are worried about the, the Fluttermane's damage output with Shadow Ball. So uh, that's definitely something that Rose has to be aware of on this turn is, like, potentially one of your two Pokemon is not going to be able to attack, and the Sylveon actually threatens both of them super effectively. Yeah, the last thing that Steel Terra Fluttermane wants to do is be taking a big big Terra Blast, but a Protect instead. No fake out pressure. Just trying to make sure it can get through the hit. It could have been a big out there, but nah, but at least no finish here is the Terra Blast will be able to get fired off. I think the, the focus here from Lou is getting rid of that Fluttermane so that now, you know, now the Moonblast is gone, it's going to be a lot more free time for this Tyranitar to, to be pressured down by this Iron Hand. So kind of thinking things through, obviously the Fire Terror is going to come back to haunt oh, the Sylveon a little bit here. Yep, there it is. That's super effective, bringing Sylveon down really low. So that's very good for Rose. Obviously, any type of attack left is going to knock it out now i'm curious you know we go back to our closed team sheet days i see iron hands protect obviously it's not assault vest so maybe this is a more setup oriented iron hands with belly drum or something like this is where my brain would be going to try because we don't have that information 
for what my opponent's four moves are on Iron Hands. Flick it, Lou. Let us let us see. <laughs> the the Iron Hands is, is certainly sort of in an awkward position, right? It wants to hit the Tyranitar, but it doesn't want to get caught by the Great Tusk. So um, tough one for this, uh, you know, this Iron Hands. But I think if you can get rid of one of these Pokemon, it, it looks like the the setup that Lou's been trying to set for the end of the game is actually going to be the Gastrodon win. Mm -hmm. That's the big focal point, right? Is she wants a Gastrodon win to be able to show just how good it is. Oh, well, I mean, 100%. I mean, you can't talk all of this game about the Gastrodon and not have that be the star of your game. And then now that the Iron Bundle is gone, I mean, it could do that. The Sylveon as well. I mean, that's going to be protected, but a hit into the Iron Hands instead will put Lou down to her final two Pokemon. So it also depends on the speed tiers between this Sylveon and Tyranitar, obviously, because this Protect, or the Crunch is going to go into Protect, so there's no damage, but uh, it depend It doesn't look like Lou has some really Trick Room-oriented team that you would want minimum speed on Sylveon, so naturally, unless Rosemary has invested a lot of speed onto her Tyranitar, the Sylveon would have outsped that turn as the Great Tusk targeted the opposing Iron Hands. Sylveon could have been free for two super effective Hyper Voices on that turn. Instead, you have to protect, and now Great Tusk is still the fastest Pokemon and can try to knock you out. But what beats the Gastrodon right now? I mean, there's nothing to hit it super effectively. And we know that if you don't get the damage down on Gastrodon early enough, it is able to sit on the field and cause a lot of problems. So yeah, now it's time to start getting those Hyper Voices down. I mean, they're not boosted so much anymore, but there's still going to be good little bits of damage. Just to attack is dangerously low off that one. Um, but you yeah, know, it's, it's now all Gastrodon. Hey, I mean, where there's a Gastron, there is a way. Rock Slide will pick up the KO. That was a crit that hardly did yeah, that was, damage. Yeah, that was did very, very little. Sylveon, I mean, wasn't going to make it past the turn with the sand chip anyways, but off the sea, Muddy Water, that should be able to clean up the first KO to put it to one-to-one. -to -one. Yeah, I mean, it's one-to-one, -one, and don't forget, there was a headlong rush earlier from the Great Tusk, so it's just a pretty straight-up one-on-one. Uh, this monster paradox Pokemon that's been terrorizing this whole tournament versus Gastrodon. Versus a the little sea slug. slug that could. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, we're about to see if it can or not, right? We're, we're being asked the question, can it take it? And it really depends on how bulky it is. Maybe that crit rock slide is going to be impactful. Um, and you can see Rose is like mulling it over. Just yeah, you trying... gotta look at the base power. I'm not, I, because headlong rush and, and close combat are effectively the same thing, right? Yeah, so but you, are they both the one, are they both 120 base powers? Just what I don't know off the top of my head. I think honestly, it's Rose is doesn't want to give away that defense drop to be able to, yeah. to kind of cause that problem. So yeah, Great Tusk locking into the Earthquake here. I think it's going to really struggle. Um, maybe just trying to save some some PP, but I'm not sure. As the Sunstorm drops, um, doesn't make a difference here, but just a good little fact to know. Okay, so you're saying, so so if Rose goes for Earthquake first here this turn, and then Gastron does not one hit the then Great you, Tusk, you then you close combat or headlong rush after because you don't care about the defense drop. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to give any way to potentially have special defense be a little too low in the Gastron and be able to make a comeback Earthquake. That is a lot of damage, though. Now the Muddy Water, that's going to be a miss! No! Uh, that's that's Muddy Water for you. Rose has played this one, uh, you know, to the out. We don't know if the Muddy Water would be enough. Single target, of course, going into that drop. But Gastrodon is the little sea slug that couldn't. <laughs> ah, blind me, Muddy Water, am I right? Poor Lou. Losing with your favorites. They say, you know, use your favorites and you're going to be able to win, but uh, not this time. It, it, it well, they say you can win your favorites. They don't with your favorites. It doesn't mean you will win with your uh, favorites. Okay, okay, my bad, my bad. If that was the case, I just roll up to tournament with six Pokemon I, I really like. And just Adam every just time... has six Heracross on his team. Uh, that's against the rules, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are we thinking of the adjustments here in uh, game two? I guess they're trying to get stuff set up on the on the the desk there, but. Obviously, Rosemary, with her lead of Fluttermane and Iron Bundle, was really starting to bring things down low enough for Titar and Great Tusk to finish them off. Uh, I think maybe get a little more value out of the Corviknight for Lou. Um, it just obviously came in and left the field pretty immediately. So that's something I'd be I'd be looking at. Is it worth it? Do you want to switch it around? Um, but it was, you know, kind of a, a straightforward set up there from from rose using those three very powerful paradox pokemon and now you know about them lou can kind of play into that one a little bit better yeah i mean there's definitely some strong threats on lou's side but when you're bringing the corviknight and you're already just down at the first turn you're just you're playing with three pokemon and that's it and you're just not having that damage output and 
I mean, the Sylveon did a lot of work, but even just a couple of the Protect turns, I mean, that could have been damage that would have been more impactful overall. But, I mean, the Muddy Water missed the end. It does suck. It was definitely a close game between the two. Uh, yeah, I mean, if the Muddy Water hits and gets an accuracy drop, then all bets are out the window and you can completely see a different game. So I don't think Lou put herself in a bad position there. I do respect that she, you know, used the Gastrodon as, as best she could, but I think the Sylveon Pro needs to be a little more aggressive, right? Try and get some more of those hyper voices down, particularly as you were saying, when they're, you know, super effective on both the Great Tusk and the Tyranitar. It, it seems silly to leave that damage up on the table. Yeah, and it also the Iron Bundle was so low that at that point, if she did go for the spread hyper voice, it would have been a, a free KO. The other thing I'm thinking on Lou's end, is because Corviknight is not strong in its special defense, and we saw the double target into it, knocking it out on turn one. What do you think about an Arcanine adjustment for the Intimidates into Great Tusk and Tyranitar? Like, obviously, they hit the, they hit them back super effectively, so that's difficult. Yeah. But if you can mitigate some of that late game uh, damage that Great Tusk was able to provide, maybe Gastronon does win that 1v1. I mean, we don't have the sheets, but like, a way to, I mean, even depending on that Terra type that it has, it could be your new favorite grass type out there. Oh, and Fluttermane Steel Terra, right? So yeah. Arcanine's good there, too. Well, the other thing I'm thinking about, right, is the Corviknight didn't provide any value, and you know what would? Probably the Grim Snarl, right? Like, we know what Grim Snarl does. We saw it so much in the, the Sword and Shield era. So at least if you're looking down at the two special attackers, once again, if it's got the light stream, which obviously we don't know, I don't have the sheet, but it's very common to, you know, be a screen user. You could completely change that turn around, right? I mean, I think that we have our players mic'd up, so maybe we can even get a little peep into what they're thinking. Yeah, let's just, we'll figure it out ourselves, I think. This is a new yeah. insight that we're not uh, used to. How about I go to um, okay, maybe my we're gonna... options. I'm in options. Okay, they're they're it's figuring some stuff out, so we're going to come back to us. They're, we'll oh. we, we'll no, maybe no, get no, this no, in no, the heat of the match for us, all right? Yeah, we'll, we'll keep talking among ourselves. Okay, we'll yeah. we'll so let them get this out. We're still previewing game two then? The, yeah, the we'll, we'll, still, we'll still talk about this and what we can see. I mean, we were talking about the Grim Snarl, but... I don't know, I just feel like Grim Snarl, we're talking about Pokemon that don't really do much. Like, yeah, the Corviknight didn't do anything because it was KO'd, but I feel like Grim Snarl doesn't really offer too much either because you just do so little. But counterpoint, would you rather complete zero actions during a game or at least one prankster priority move? You can't, It kind of feels like you're at negative one action sometimes when you have the Grim Snarl snuck on the field not doing anything. At least the Corviknight getting KO'd leaves way for a second spot to bring something else out that'll do something. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, Sierra, on the Grim Snarl in this moment because it's already like, Lou doesn't have any sweepers, right? She doesn't have anyone that's going to set up and just and steamroll the game the way that Rosemary's Fluttermane and Iron Bundle can just take, take four KOs because they're so fast. So when well, you have Grim Snarl, sure you set up Light Screen or Reflect if you're facing down those two as the lead, but then what does Grim Snarl do after the Light Screen? He's kind of wasting the team slot that could be used on a, a better Pokemon, especially if it's only attack is Spirit Break and you're facing down against a Steel Terra Fluttermane as well. Like, I, I understand Grim Snarl's merit here, but I just feel like it's kind of a three and a half Pokemon to four Pokemon matchup if you lead it. I mean, my claim is that the Corviknight did so little, it was just a three Pokemon matchup, right? Yeah. So I'd rather have a three and a half than a three. I'm not a mathematician, Joe, but I can tell you that three and a half is bigger than three. The maths is mathing. Yeah, it just feels like that's a that's an easier way to be able to, to navigate this kind of situation. and. You know, at least, like you say, Spirit Break, though. I mean, at least Spirit Break's going to hit into, you know, Tyranitar and, and Great Tusk for a good chunk of damage. That's something. You know, you were saying, where's the Hyper Voice? Well, you know, at least then you'd be able to, to keep that kind of idea going and get that good damage down on them. I'm not saying it's the correct pick. I'm just saying it's something you got to consider at Team Preview. I'd love to also know what Lou's other Terra types are besides the Sylveon, because although Fire Terra Sylveon is very common and, you know, uh, a very a very strong Terra option. If you could stay the fairy type and let's say the uh, let let's say it's Grass Terra on Iron Hands, which is a common Terra type, form, right? Then that Earthquake is just doing you know a, hardly any damage to it in instead of being super effective. So uh, I'd love that if Lou could lead Sylveon, use the th use the Hyper Voices, try to just whittle everything down but then not feel pressured into terrestrializing because I don't I don't believe Fluttermane had Terra Blast unless I'm, I'm misremembering. So it's not like there's a no. steel attack that's gonna go into Sylveon who has obviously incredible 
um, special defense stat. It's one of its strongest stats there that, like, I feel like you might not need to terrify the Sylveon. No, I mean, I, I don't think the, the Sylveon needs to be the terror, especially if you have Grass Iron Hands as well. Looking at Rose's team, I think we've spoken about Luz quite a lot. Um, to be honest, I'd like to see uh, Rose bring the Lycan Rock. Why did I, I not get to well, see yeah. it? I mean, just because just we're having a show match, let's see a cool Pokemon and see how much it can do here. I'm all for that. Plus, you're already up one in the series. Like, yeah, a little bit. Like, I would like to see that Pokemon. Lou is bringing one of the favorites. Why not bring this Lycan Rock? Let us see what it does. Even if it doesn't do much, I mean, what's the worst case? A game three? I, don't, I feel like Lycan Rock is the literal only one Pokemon that probably shouldn't come in this Even match because of Corviknight because of, you know, uh, Gastrodon and Iron Hands and everything like that. I just think it's a really tough spot. Let's okay, go. all right, let's see, Rose. What do you got? Called it. I wanted to see it, and now it's right there, of course, you know, being able to play it, play around that quite nicely hive when, mind. when the sand is up. It's uh, it's really good. But, you know, what what did the, really either of these Pokemon do? I'm quite interested to see what, you know, what potential uh, we got out of this Tyranitar that seems to be uh, just, oh, well, not Rock Side, no. Never the rock don't, slide. Don't no, it's the rock always slides. the rock slide. If no. You, if Flick if it. they both connect, you have you have the double rock slide flinch chances. And it's I a mean, flex. This is a caster battle, Adam. That is no. true. There's nothing more infuriating than sitting on the other side of the field and just seeing your Pokemon get flinched over and over. But rock oh. slide <laughs> missed the iron. <laughs> if caster on attacks, I'll be impressed. All right. Ooh. Okay, that's pretty bad. Ooh. All right, you only get one set of rock slides down. That Tyranitar is not going to stand up to those hands whatsoever. Yeah, that's uh, the Tyranitar gone. So now just the Lycan Rock left. Let's see if Gastrodon gets a turn. Okay, yo! It's, uh, it's going to be a Muddy Water connecting. Not enough for the okay, knockout, yo! but uh, no. yeah. That, that was, was It was an interesting attempt <laughs> so for the rock cool. slide. It just didn't seem to work out. So um, the, the Lycan Rock suggestion, do we want to backtrack yet or...? I mean, it was fun. It was entertaining. <laughs> I'm excited to see how these players play in game three now. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's still going to be with the fastest rock slide on the field. So while it's not doing much damage, let's see what else it can do. Hey, I mean, rock slide, double flinch, town flame, set up the tailwind, set up the will-o'-wisp. I mean, there's options. Oh, we have some items. Okay, sharp. I saw sharp, a sharp beak, beak. A, a salt vest, T-tar, life orb on, um, what was that, Fluttermane? I, I, I couldn't remember. We're trying. This is. We're trying to piece all our information together in our closed. We're, team we're sheet trying format. to build the open team sheet as we go. <laughs> yeah. Someone has to be at home writing this down. Yeah. I, I mean, I think Rockside is is probably the. Yeah, and you know, it's not like you need Tailwind, right? Because most of Rose's Pokemon are actually faster than Luz, Gastron, Iron Hand, Sylveon, Corviknight. Those are really slow Pokemon compared to her side. So if you can just get a little bit of support out of Talonflame for these next couple of turns, that would be pretty helpful. Yeah, and obviously using the Terra to get away from uh, potentially just getting hit with uh, a wild charge. Certainly helpful move to uh, to avoid and try not to get completely done by. But like a Rock's just going for it. Everyone's favorite play from the last 10 years of VGC. <laughs> Will-O-Wisp is going to connect as well. We know the accuracy of that move in it. Sometimes is just not the greatest. So Iron Hands, that's definitely going to be a little neutralized going into this, but still will be able to fire back a wild charge. Significantly less damage this time around. And now... Time for the Gastrodon. Will be able to go for the Muddy Water, but connecting oh, it's a little bit of a different story. Okay, fair, fair. Rose that's, got the dodge, but not the one that you wanted. To rock you slide wanted Lycan Rock to avoid the Muddy Ooh. Water because then you'd obviously get another, you know, be around for a little bit longer. But I do think the Terra was the right play. You were facing a Water type and an Electric type as a Fire Flying type, right? So yep. I think that was that was the correct play. Just unfortunately, the Muddy Water didn't miss for her. I'm yeah. the only one patched into this, but Rose is talking like. That's what I get for trying to go for the for the rock slide flinch. It was deserved. Okay, okay. I mean, she knows. That's a little bit of car karma coming out. Well, we got like the really fun lead from Rose as well, where we got to see this like and rock Tyranitar. Now she's gone back to just like straight pure meta. She's like, Tailwind Great Tusk, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's 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 been fun, Lou, but now now time yeah. to get sweaty. Yeah. Go back to default <laughs> settings. This is the I mean, this is the pairing that we've gotten to see players just steamroll through the competition with this weekend. The only thing, Talonflame is no longer a flying type, right? So if you try to go for the spread earthquake, you're going to hit your own teammate. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem as the Brave Bird uh, goes into... Ooh, Gastron Protect looking good there. Okay, okay. Kind of cheeky, kind of cute. The headlong rush, though, that's going to be the Iron Hands dealt with. Yeah, but it does lower, you know, you, because as you said, Joe, you can't earthquake. 
every time that you go for an attack with this great task, you're going to lower your defenses. That is not fun. That is not something you want to deal with. So we'll see what uh, Lou is able to bring in to, to kind of close this, or, you know, try and close this one out. Um, but, you know, the, the talent flame is getting lower and lower. Uh, you know, could be, could be a good game three coming up. It could be. I'm excited because, um, all right, Sylveon, we got to see this before. Now it's coming out. Get those spread hyper voices. Well, as well, the Talonflame isn't fire type anymore, so uh, those are going to hurt even more. Yeah, that's, um, I think what's also what's also cool about Rosemary's Great Tusk is a lot of them, if they are the three attacks and protect, are focus are, are focus sash, and she's actually life form, so it gives just a little bit more of a boost to damage that Lou might not be anticipating that additional 30% damage coming out. I mean, we got to hear it from Colin yesterday. I mean, you could worry about how much damage they're going to do, or you can just try and a take a KO, but critical hit. Yeah, let's see if uh, that's going to be important. Oh, it was a crit, though, right? Oh, wait, well, it did, like, you only need a little bit. But still, you did not uh, Rose just I didn't want to. <laughs> okay, <laughs> didn't want to. She wanted to win this game legit. She <laughs> didn't want the crit. She wants to see how it goes, but not the strength too much. And now the muddy water. I mean, yeah, you, you can't lower your defenses like that. You can't take that recoil on Brave Bird and think the Muddy Water's not going to finish you off. As, uh, in this time, I'll give it give it credit. It's the little sea slug that could. There we go. We're 50-50 right now with Gastronaut being effective and not effective. So Your, uh, your favorite statistic, 50-50, yes, Joe. Absolutely. <laughs> you can argue everything is 50-50, Adam. That's true. Rock slide flinch, 50-50. It either flinches or it doesn't, baby. So hold on. If you have two rock sides hit, is it still 50-50 on flinch? Well, okay, I'm not a mathematician, so I don't I don't know. Like, do you have two flinch rolls if you double rock slide, or is it still the one flinch roll? I think based on your math, Joe, we have to follow the rules. I don't know. First Let me rule, just text Masuda real quick. First yes. of all, we follow the bid mass to get through <laughs> no, that. No, we situation. absolutely do not. It is PEMDAS. We are not going over this again. All right. Well, at this point, we got to see... The two games come out. We got to see both players be able to take the win. But thing is, is I think that we have a match soon on our horizon. This was fun, but we do have a tournament and <sighs> everybody's a winner, Sierra. We're going to leave this as a cliffhanger. We're going to leave it as cliffhanger. <laughs> this is to be continued. So we're going to send it to a quick break. And on the other side of it, we're going to have Sam Pandela's going up against Alberta Laura.